Good morning and welcome to St. Paul United Methodist Church service under the leadership of Dr. Rev. Richard L. Stryker III. We are located on 1500 6th Avenue North, Birmingham, Alabama 35203. Our number is 205-352-3233. We pray you will receive a blessing from today's service. God bless. We want to welcome you here uh, with us at St. Paul. We appreciate you taking the time to join in with us and being a part of our worship service. Uh, We know that uh, you could have chosen some other uh, perfect place to uh, tune in to that you're doing this uh, online, but you chose to be with us, and we do appreciate that, and we hope that the experience will be uplifting for you. We're going to begin with our call to worship, and uh, we will have you stand, uh, those who are present, if you would. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. God provided manna for the free people of Israel. God provides for us. The risen Christ is with us. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. You may be seated. At this time, we will continue with our scripture reading. Uh, The scripture reading is uh, taken from uh, Exodus, the uh, 16th chapter, 9th verse through 15. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Then Moses said to Aaron, announce this to the entire community of Israel. Present yourself before the Lord, for he has heard your complaint. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out toward the wilderness. There they could see the awesome glory of the Lord in the cloud. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the Israelites' complaints Now tell them in the evening you will have meat to eat, and in the morning you will have all the bread you want. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, vast numbers of quail flew in and covered the camp. And the next morning, the area around the camp was wet with dew. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance was as fine as frosted blanketed the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it? They asked each other. They had no idea what it was. And Moses told them, It is the food the Lord has given you to eat. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Holy is the Lord. 
Almighty God, we pray that you speak to us now by the power of your Holy Spirit. Bless us in hearing your word. In Christ's name, amen. Last week, we joined Miriam and the people of Israel in celebrating their deliverance from Egypt. This week, Exodus chapter 16 tells us that the people have moved from praise to complaining. You know, first they complained that the water was bitter, and God turned the water, it says sweet, turned the water in such a way that they could drink it, drinkable water. They began to complain about not having enough food to eat. That's where we find ourselves today, Exodus chapter 16. They complain against Moses and really against God. But if you think about it, the people of Israel had come expecting something new. They had come expecting something exciting. They had come expecting that everything will be okay. But it's discovered that between freedom and a new place, between freedom from Egypt and a promised land, they still had a lot to go through. We find ourselves in many cases 
with a lot to go through, don't we? Maybe this very day you find yourself in a situation where there's not enough food to eat, or maybe there's not a shell. Your shelter is a, is at risk because mortgage is due, rent is due. Maybe you've been in a situation in which you the lights went off in your neighborhood. And most people were thinking to themselves, I wonder if the transformer has gone off. But you were thinking to yourself, did I pay my bill this month? Bring that bill, let me see it. Was there a disconnection notice that I missed? People are going through trying times, very difficult times. So in many ways, even though we may not be complainers like the children of Israel, but we understand something about difficult times. But even when it's not economic troubles, you may be going through or preparing to go through some emotional storms. You begin to wrestle with why. Why me, Lord? Why me? Why, Lord? The reality is that the people of Israel were going through some trying times, emotionally, economically. They were going through uncertain times. What should they do? My message to you today is that the Lord heard their cry. God heard their plea. You know, of course, the people of Israel could have been more diplomatic in the asking and the plea to God. They could have been more gracious. They could have been more thankful for all that God had done for them. No, they were not. Well, nobody's perfect, though. And in spite of their shortcomings, the Lord heard them. In spite of our shortcoming, the Lord hears us. God heard them and provided for them. Quill, the scripture says, quills flew through the evening and it rested in such a way that they were able to have meat for the day, or for the evening. God told Moses, he said, tell the children of Israel, I, I will give them meat, which he did. I will give them bread. And so all through the night, the dew just settled and settled, and the heavy dew set out. And in the morning, they were able to go and look on the ground. And they found these things that were there. And they said to Moses, what is it? And Moses said to them, it's the bread that the Lord had promised you. It's the bread. But he named it manna. He named it manna because manna is for what is it? Nobody knew what it was. But we know one thing. It was God's provision for them. You know, a few days ago, I had the opportunity to visit one of the areas where John and Charles Wesley spend their time, when the short time that they stayed in the United States. On this spot, rectangle, you can see what is said to be the North Storehouse at uh, Fort Federica. And in the background is uh, described as a remnant of what is left of uh, most of the structures here. But on this North storehouse, it is said that John Wesley provided spiritual food. In fact, I'll read this piece for you. Um, Ships, cargoes of food, tools, weapons, and other provisions provi uh, vital to the colony were stored here. Frederica's food stores for 1737 
included so many pounds of meat and rice and uh, gallons of wine. The Stet storehouse doubled as a courthouse and church. John Wesley conducted Anglican services on the third floor. In his journal for Sunday, April 11, 1736, it is said that Wesley wrote, I preach at the new storehouse on the first verse of the gospel for the day. Which of you convince me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? Charles Wesley, John's brothers, also preach in this building, which he called our tabernacle. Our tabernacle. What did John think about our text for the day, the Exodus reading? John Wesley wrote in his notes, or his reflection on the scripture, Exodus 16, verse 15, What is this? Mine descended from the clouds. It came down in dew, melted, and yet was itself of such a consistency as to serve for nourishing, strengthening food. Without anything else, it was pleasant food. The Jews say it was palatable to all, according as their tastes were. It was wholesome food, light of digestion, and by this sparse and plain diet, we are all taught a lesson of temperance and forbidding the desired dainties and varieties. That's what John Wesley taught about it. But you know, the Lord said to the people of Israel, take what you need for today. And for others who are in your household who are unable to come out, take an omer for each person in your household. Now, an omer, uh, understand from the archaeological study scripture, was about a quart, one, one quart. Others suggest it may be otherwise. However, we know that it was enough for sustenance of the people per day. The key is that there was daily provision from God for God's people. It took faith and it took work to get to that food. You see, even though God sent them the provision from heaven, they still had to actually do something. They still had to work in order to get the provision that God had made available to them. God also did not want the people to work on the Sabbath. And so he told Moses, on the sixth day, I will permit the manna to last for twice as long. As you see, any other day, it would turn, turn foul, it would spoil. But for Saturday, I mean for Friday, which would then be available on Saturday, their Sabbath, God made it so that it would last through two days. Wesley again, on verse 19. Let them learn to go to bed and sleep quietly, though they had not a bit of bread in their tent, nor in all their camp, trusting God with the following day to bring them their daily bread. Never, according to John, never was there such a market of provision as this, where so many hundreds, thousand men, were daily furnished with our money and with our price. Never was there so much an open house that was kept as God kept in the wilderness for 40 Years. So for 40 years, God fed the children of Israel. God made provision for them. And we keep in mind that these were not perfect folks. They had their challenges. And God had some dealing to do with them. But God loved them anyway. You know, many people try to store up for tomorrow, to try to make the paycheck last more than a week or two weeks or a month, depending on when the next one is due. And it's reasonable to do so, by the way. It's reasonable to have something extra so that when the car breaks down, you'll be able to fix it. 
When a roof leaks, you'll be able to repair it. When a school year begins, you will be able to buy something for, for the children to go to school. It's okay, it's reasonable to keep something for another day. It's reasonable that we make provision for tomorrow. Reasonable that we make provision for our family well-being even beyond our own death. It's reasonable to do so. But let us not take this reasonableness. It should not lead us to, to the path of fear. It should not lead us into thinking that God will not make a way. God has and God will deliver to us our daily needs. God who provided the manna today will provide manna tomorrow. God who provided food today will provide food tomorrow. God who took care of us today will take care of us tomorrow. God who was in, is in charge of us today will be in charge of us tomorrow. Our daily manna, our daily bread. God who gave each an omer will give enough to last during the downtime time. God, the way maker, will make a way out of no way. Even in dry and desolate circumstances, God will make a way. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, what is it that we pray? We pray to the Lord, we say to the Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Our daily manner, shelter, clothing, medical care, justice, well-being of our neighbor are all part of our daily needs. We have to feed, we have to clothe, but we also have to make sure that justice roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. In the year 2000, Nelson Mandela received the World Methodist Peace Award. And if it had not been for the United Methodist Church, he writes or says or said on that occasion, I would still be in my village. We can accomplish a whole lot, can we, when we work together, when we take the provision that God makes for us. And join it with the provision of others in order to feed, clothe, educate, provide justice. You know, Mandela's mother was a Methodist. And he followed in her footsteps, attending a Methodist missionary school. Mandela also graduated, and after four years from Health Town, a strict Methodist college. He left to pursue higher education at the University of Fort Hare, South Africa's first university college for black Africans. God takes care of our daily needs. When Nelson Mandela addressed the World Council of Churches, he prays in fact, he thanked them, told them that if it had not been for the proclamation against racism that the World Council of Churches made in 1968, the liberation movements that created the independence of Zimbabwe and saw the end of apartheid in South Africa, none of that would have ever happened. That's because people understood that food is important, but so is clothing, so it is for shelter, so it is for peace and the right of the individual. I mean, why did the children of Israel leave Egypt? Not because they did not have food. In fact, the complaint to Moses was, we have plenty of food. At least that's what he thought or said. We have plenty of food, but Justice and peace and oppression was what was killing them. And so they were pleading to leave Egypt 
and God took them on a voyage of freedom. Yes, we need to feed. And we dare not stop. So many people are hungry today, especially now. We don't need to slow down. But that shouldn't keep us from also attending to the needs of people, the full and complete need of the person. Health care, education. What is your need today? Is it economic, emotional, spiritual need? John Wesley reminds us in this passage, he said, Christ himself is a true manna. Christ himself is a bread of life. Now he was quoting from John 6, 49. The word of God is the manna by which our souls are nourished. Matthew 4. He tells us, or John tells us, uh, John Wesley tells us, the comfort of the spirit are hidden manna. These comforts from heaven as the manna did are the support of the divine life in a soul while we are in the wilderness of this world. They that eat manna hunger again, he says. In fact, they died at last, uh, and with many of them, God was not well pleased, Wesley tells us. Whereas they that feed on Christ they that feed on Christ by faith shall never hunger, and with them God will be forever. What is your need today? Whatever your need is, our God is able to take care of it. I've been amazed this pandemic, you know, looking at a little bit of a gardening here and, and planting some potato there and, and, and a little bit of okra there. I've been amazed at how, without even intending it, the Lord provides for it water and nutrients and then it just continues to grow. In the same way, we are much more important than any flower in the field. We're much more important than any any, any plant that we plant, any vegetable that we plant, we're much more important than any bird of, and all these things are important, by the way, birds of the air. But we're so much more important to our God in whose image we're made. May God bless us to trust Him knowing that He will take care of us. He will take care of you. Have no doubt about it. No doubt about it. He took care of the children of Israel. He'll take care of you. He'll take care of you. Our daily manna. Amen.
down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke 6, 38. If you have been blessed by this service and would like to sow a seed into this ministry, please visit our giving page. The information is provided on the slide coming across your screen. that we will sing praises to your holy name. And now in the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forever. And together the church of God say, you were blessed by today's worship service. We encourage our St. Paul family, friends, and those looking for a church home to join us each week for our virtual church experience. Please like, share, and subscribe to our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Thank you and have a blessed week.